What is up my aesthetic boys, it's Fresh, back with another video. On today's thrilling episode of r slash choosing beggars, I'm gonna do my best to discourage you from ever making homemade pasta. I hope you enjoy. Hey, I'm Emily and I current go to school here. I'm struggling a lot in English at the moment and I'm trying to find a tutor that can help me with my assignments. I'm in year 11 and live in this town, but I'm happy to do tutoring in the library at school. I would love to meet you as soon as you can. Hi Emily, thank you for your message. I'm available for tutoring on Monday and Wednesday afternoons, meeting there, or weekends can meet either at your house or the local library. Let me know what suits you best. I would like to do school. My friend Ash and I both wanted to do it, so would you be able to do both of us for the same price at the same time? No problem. I can't do two for the price of one because it will mean extra work for me, but I can give you a discount if you'd both like to do it at the same time. My normal rate is $35 per hour per person, but I'm happy to bring it down to $25 each. Does this sound okay? I will talk to my dad and get back to you. Okay. Then her dad texted me. Hi, this is Emily's dad. She contacted you about tutoring. Would you be able to do both girls for $35? They're both in high school still and can't pay that much each. Regards, John. Quick side note, I think it is the greatest thing when old people sign off on their text messages. Keep doing you, John. Keep doing you. Uh, anyway, back to the messages. Hi, John. My normal tutoring rate is $35 per hour per person. I told Emily I'd be happy to tutor her and her friend for $25 each. I took into account that, although I will be tutoring two people at once, which means more work for me, this also means I won't be able to give each one my individual attention. Therefore, I think $25 each is a fair price. No. $35. $35 each? I did offer $25, but if you'd like to raise my rate, that's fine by me. Please. Emily is struggling with English and needs your help. She is only in high school and can't afford that much. Regards. Yes, and I'm a university student and have to pay for my own expenses. Sorry, but I've already offered to lower my rate. She needs a tutor. She will fail because of you. Dumb. Oh, John, come on. You couldn't have just signed off again? Couldn't have just ended it with regards, John? You had to insult the guy? Come on, John. You're better than that. CB wants to buy quote unquote miles, but expects me to give them away. Backstory. Acquaintance to whom I gave plane tickets to years ago to help get their child to a specialist for surgery contacts me out of the blue. Haven't heard from them in years. He said, I have an emergency. I need a plane ticket, but I don't have cash. Can I buy some miles from you? I need to go to this location and have to be out there by Sunday evening, so if I can't fly, it's going to be a 24-hour drive. Well, for a one-way ticket, they want 30,000 miles and $75 for the short notice booking. The cheapest one-way cash price I could find is $1,000. Why don't we say the miles will be half that and you can pay once you're on your feet out there? But I just want to buy the miles. Don't you get them for free or something? That's a lot of money. Um, no. I have to do specific things to earn them, and I save them so I can travel overseas. It's half what you'd pay for the plane ticket at the moment. But, blah, insert results of lots of bad life and personal decisions here that were in no way related to, driven by, or concerning me. Well, that's awful. I hear that. It sounds like you've had a rough time of it recently. But it's gonna be a 24-hour drive. Well, I hope it's a safe one. Drive carefully. It's the same thing whenever someone has a perk of some kind that other people want. Season tickets, miles, points, any credit card accrued reward, hotels, flights, cruises, the Hello Kitty Platinum Rewards card, no, that's actually a real thing, or even the International Brotherhood of Magicians credit card, also a real thing. Whether you're trying to get a friend to give you free rewards miles like this distant acquaintance, or perhaps convince your slight-handed brother to toss some brand name magic equipment credit your way, well, maybe next time, um, don't. Or at least be nice about it. 
or just don't. I promise you that is always an option. Looking for a PS4. Looking to trade PlayStation 2 with three games, a controller, and memory card for a PlayStation 4. Yeah, good luck with that one. He's not even trying to trade the last generation. This is... This is a game console that came out. Oh god, when did this come out? The year 2000! Literally! Man's trying to trade a two-decade-old console for the latest system. As the guy said, good luck. Customer wants to try out Naus, but without opening the box. So, yesterday while I was holding down the fort, a client, well, not really, came in. He was looking for a cheap mouse for his computer. After showing him a few models, he decided on an 8 euro one and asked if he could try it before buying it. I agreed, thinking to myself it was kind of a reasonable request. So, first we tried on the computer we have in the shop, and then not very convinced, he asked me to keep the shop open while he went home to take his computer back. He had asked if he could take the mouse home for free, and if it worked out he would come back and pay. And, well, that wasn't gonna happen. I waited until 2 o'clock, unfortunately skipping lunch, before he arrived with an old IBM from a dozen years ago. We tried the mouse in his computer, it worked, and then he asked if I could give him another mouse, still sealed. I told him that the mouse he tried was closed before he came in. Nevertheless, he wanted a sealed one. So I take another mouse in box, and at that point I understand I had just wasted a few hours. He asks me to open it and try that mouse too. I tell him that if we open the mouse, he will have to buy it if it works, as we can't just stay there all day opening mouses. He got visibly angry and started yelling that I was too young and understood nothing. Not sure what the heck that meant, but okay. And finally left with a classic, I'm never coming back. A quick question for the audience. Is the plural of mouse when it comes to the computer accessory mouses or mice? I'm not sure exactly. Anyway, here we are again at the old never coming back line. That means a lot from a guy who tried to get the store stuck in an infinite loop of let me try that mouse to all right, so do you have that new in box? And then again, insisting to try the mouse while never actually pulling out his wallet. You want to know why stores generally try to be nice to their customers? Because business could be considered a mutual symbiotic relationship for all you people who took 7th grade science. Businesses need customers, customers need businesses, they both help each other in a sense. Note however that I said businesses are generally nice to customers. Does that mean you should be unreasonably mean to someone who isn't giving you money? No. But does that mean that you're a customer if you haven't actually shown a real intention of buying anything? Well, also no. Hey man, tomorrow is my birthday and I need some merch, man. Hook me up with a code or something, please. Lol. Use your birthday money. If you get none, I ain't showing you love if your own family won't. Hey, uh, anybody want to sponsor this kid? He isn't dying, so I can't hook him up. Not even gonna front, the double meaning of hookup as in giving merch and also medical equipment as if he's dying would low-key make that caption an absolute bar. Ice cream cone tax for assholes. Years ago, my friend worked in an ice cream shop. The way the local tax laws worked, ice cream taken to go were considered groceries and weren't charged as sales tax. Ice cream eaten there was considered something else. Served food, I think, but it was a taxable item. They had to ask the customer if it was to go or for dine in so they could charge it accordingly. As you can probably guess from it being on this subreddit, anyone who was being an asshole while ordering was rung up as dine in and had to pay the sales tax. I don't think any of the customers caught on, but sales tax on $6 isn't a lot of money. And I know it wasn't that much money or that great of a revenge scheme, but it was used very literally as an asshole tax. Like OP said, a literal asshole tax. Well, at least in one meaning of the word. I think similar things apply to most service positions, though flight attendants in particular, I've heard. If you aren't an asshole, you'll generally get better service. People like it when you're nice to them. Who would have thought? I mean, that can really take a whole bunch of different forms. Maybe that's some more sprinkles on your next cone. Or as one commenter suggests, even a free drink on your next round. And even if you don't get anything free out of being nice, 
well, you can go ahead and stop expecting people to give you free things for being the bare minimum of a decent person. And please God, be the bare minimum of a decent person. My rules. If I even think you are telling the complete truth, we are done. I decide where to go and what to do and when. You will rearrange as needed to accommodate my plans. I pay for nothing. You provide the funding. I drive. You come to me, I don't do trailers. You must shower and use only approved scents. You cannot at any time show me up or appear as to be more intelligent than me. Damn, are you Turkey? Or China? Maybe Albania? Because I'm seeing some serious red flags. Uninvited dinner choosing beggars. One day back in uni, I decided it was time to have some friends over for dinner. I invited three friends and decided as a treat for some fellow starving students that I would make spaghetti from scratch. Went to the farmer's market and bought fresh tomatoes and various herbs. Spent all day making the sauce using nothing from a can. Heck, even made the pasta using my old pasta roller. So the appointed time rolls around and only two of my friends show. So we proceed to play some cards and lament about our classes. 90 minutes late, friend number three finally shows up bringing three uninvited people that I don't know. I'm not super outgoing and don't like large groups of people. So having three random people that I don't know in my place makes for a bad evening regardless of what happened next. I realize in retrospect, with the wisdom of age, I should have just told the three strangers, you're welcome to stay, but no food for you. But I was too much in shock having someone double the number of guests to think straight. Here comes the fun part. We proceed to have dinner, as we're all starving now that dinner is 45 minutes later than originally planned. CB stranger number one complained loudly that there wasn't enough food. That tends to happen when you size a meal for four people and seven show up. CB Stranger 2 complained that he didn't like the meal I had literally spent all day preparing and proceeded to put close to a full cup of salt into a small bowl of spaghetti. How he didn't die from a sodium overdose is beyond me. Worst part is he used up the rest of my expensive salt. Seems rude to use up the remainder of someone's salt like that before anyone else had a chance. CB Stranger number 3 accidentally spilled his bowl of spaghetti all over my couch and carpet while I was cleaning up his mess, he went back and refilled his bowl before I had a chance to serve myself, leaving me with nothing to eat. After the rest aid, CBs 1, 2, and 3 started asking if we could play Catan or Xbox or something, and my response was along the lines of, I don't care what the hell we do, but we aren't doing it here. Ah, uh, but here's the question of the day. Which party was more rude or inconsiderate? The person who was inconsiderate enough to show up incredibly late and bring three friends OP didn't know, entirely unannounced, clearly all with the intent of eating free food, or the manners of the three CB friends, who all showed up at a stranger's house, consumed large amounts of handmade food with little consideration for anyone else, including the host, and then tried to use OP's apartment as a place to game. Honestly, seems like a real toss-up to me. Let me know in the comments. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. Be sure to subscribe for more daily Reddit content. Drop a like if you like the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.